tries to sell you one of those push top pop dart things. It's a pop oh, yeah. socket. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I've nearly had several, not one, but several car accidents trying to adjust my phone because of pop top. Well, I have one. It's pop socket. Pop socket. That's what it is. I have one on my phone, and I don't have any problems at all. So yeah, I'm not going to go there. Be the user. Yeah, it could be. Could be. Has so much time on your hands to <laughs> adjust your pop socket that uh, you you it works, it works for you. Anyway, my name is Steve Houston. I'm sure most of you know that. You've been on this channel before. This is Angela, and she Hi. has many. And we are on a road trip to Reno, Nevada, and uh, back. Yep. And uh, so I figured it was a great time to connect with you guys. Many of you know that we're in a moving process. We're still keeping our uh, offices in, in California, but we're also going to open one in Florida. Location uh, is yet to be disclosed, so we don't uh, announce it to all the other competitors who may want to go into that town and open it themselves up a new uh, office for virtual and for face-to-face -face agents. So if you're in that area, uh, let's just say in Florida, uh, or want to be, uh, certainly reach out to us because we're looking to build a strong virtual team uh, in that area as well to call nationwide. So, uh, but I did want to, I, felt, I thought since we're, we had a little bit of a drive here and uh, uh, we have a decent cell coverage that I would enlist Angela in helping me answer a very long uh, text conversation that I had um, this over the weekend from, uh, from one of the YouTube patrons here. Appreciate your support, all of you for that matter. If you haven't already done so, hit the like button thumbs up, thumbs down, make a comment, hit the subscribe button, and match the bell. All those things that they, they want you to do on YouTube to get the video to uh, be shared out by YouTube. It's all about engagement. Doesn't matter what kind of engagement it is. If you're doing a thumbs up or a thumbs down, making a comment, or watching the video to the end also helps. Uh, they uh, recommend the video to other people that are like you. And that helps us get more views, get more subscribers, and uh, makes this worthwhile because while we don't make any money on YouTube, uh, it does uh, get disheartening at times when uh, when we're the only one watching we're the only one watching our own videos. So, but that's not the case, I know. But uh, it'd be nice to share it out. This exchange is I, I, I get a lot, um, and basically uh, there are three things that that you really should. No, the number one question is, what, Steve? What is the best IMO? And I've tried to cover this. For, for a lot, for several years. And uh, I, I make a point of saying that it's a good question, it shouldn't be the only question that you're asking. And it shouldn't be the number one question because the IMOs, while we're with one that has great training, IMOs are not in the training business. And they're not in the position to give you that ground level support, which means teaching you the skills necessary you need to succeed before, during, and after the appointment. I mean, talking to somebody like Angela, who's a wealth of knowledge when it comes to underwriting and medications, you know, we can get our agents before they go into the, to the appointment knowing exactly what that, that client qualifies for. They can call us from the home, we'll talk to the agent and the client, help them get that uh, family protected and get the sale. That kind of, and there's a lot more to it than that, but we have actually a 15 step orientation slash training program that our agents go through before they even make the first dial. So, uh, and it's not on YouTube. We don't put our training on YouTube. It's uh, over the phone, face to face, uh, every single day, as for as long as our, if they need it. We've got people that have been calling us. You know, obviously, the longer you're in the business, the goal is is to teach you how to think like an underwriter. So you don't. So you need us less. But you can get in, get going, start making some money, without having a wide depth of knowledge on things like underwriting. You know, once you learn to script and you, make, and you start making some dials, you can book some appointments, you can get paid the first week. And we got this whole write your own contract thing going on right now. And if you have that kind of support, you like I said, you can get out there, start running some appointments, uh, call off the home, utilize the angel to help you with the appointments, start uh, writing some applications, start getting paid, and write your own contract. You know, get yourself all up to 120, 140% plus, which is the best train, uh, comp, uh, uh, compensation commission rate in the industry with the best IMO and with the best 
agency level training and support. But anyways, uh, so that's the, it's not an easy question to ask. What's the best IMO? Um, I, the best IMO is the one we're with, or we wouldn't be there. But it's the training that we provide our agents that make it really a one-two punch. But anyway, um, there's three things you have to have to succeed. Good lead program. And I, again, when I say lead program, I'm talking about the IMO actually does the mailing. Not one that gives you a list of lead vendors and tells you to give them a call, which is one of the, you know, an IMO is all over YouTube. That's what they do. They don't actually own a lead program. They have leads for their agents or lead vendors for their agents. You have to go out there and negotiate your rates uh, and, and get your leads. Okay, but leads, support, and training. And only one of those can possibly be found with an IMO, which is the leads. And most IMOs don't own a lead program. They own a vendor list. Okay, so um, that's where this conversation went. So let me just kind of read you while driving the the, uh, the text I got. It basically says, he's asking about final expense and mortgage session uh, because I've always heard that we should pick one and, why don't you read this? Don't read the, the, the caps, because that's mine. I respond. Oh. Read the first line. Or second, um, yeah, yeah. Asking about final expense and or mortgage protection because always heard that we should pick one and master first. So the question was, I, I cut it off, but the question was, should I sell or do you sell final expense or do you sell mortgage protection? Again, a question that really shouldn't be being asked. Final expense and mortgage protection is a solution to a need, right? It's, a, it's so it, it's life insurance, folks. We sell life insurance. I sell final expense. I sell mortgage protection. Mortgage protection typically is a whole life policy. Final expense typically is a term policy. I also sell IULs. I do reverse. What? Did uh, I say reverse? Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, I'm driving, so forgive me. You fixed it. So mortgage protection is typically typically a term solution and. Uh, final expense is typically a whole life solution. Correct. Why? Because final expense, you want it to be there when you need it, which is when you die, which means it has to be there for you what? Whole life. Your whole life. Term is going to term out. Thank you, Angela, for covering me because I'm sure I would have got hate mail on that. Um, so we sell everything. Like I said, IULs, advanced products, annuities, life insurance, college funding retirement solutions, all that stuff. And I recommend you do as well. And this idea that you have to learn, you know, specialize in one, yeah, we do. We specialize in selling life insurance, right? We fit the life insurance product to their need, whether it be final expense or um, uh, mortgage section. What's the next question? I'm, it, it, it's kind of a continuation. Because I'm looking to sell final expense. I was not, I am not, slash wasn't interested in mortgage protection maybe because I don't know how it works. I think, can I just answer that? Yeah, go ahead. It's all life insurance and I think that when people say, well, I don't want to sell final expense or I don't want to sell mortgage protection, it's just because they don't understand. They, they, the industry, I think, has made the concept and the subject very complicated and they're trying to, some, some agents and some agencies are trying to confuse the consumer so they make it more complicated. It's all life insurance and there's either term insurance or whole life insurance or universal life insurance. It's not that it's not it's not as complicated as I think. Yeah. It's because he doesn't know how it works. So don't read our my 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 notes, but go ahead and read the whole text so they, they figure they can see where you know there are a lot of confused people out there. The more people you talk to that are recruiters, the more people you end up getting the more you end up getting confused. So go ahead and read this. Last week I went to an organization sales training. I like the environment, however, yes, the guy what? You have to speak a little bit. My mouth's way over there. Oh. Uh, last week I went to an organization uh, sales training. I like the environment. However, the guy who was hosting the event said he chose to sell only mortgage protection. He also said I can sell final expense if I want, but my question to myself was how can he train me if he doesn't do it? You know what I mean? Anyway, I found your info on social media. I live in Arizona. I got my license four years ago because I was hired by a local funeral home to sell pre-need. I did it for three years. I quit last January. Um, however, two years ago, I joined an agency that is in Virginia to sell final expense while I was still selling pre-need. I had little to no training, so I 
failed and I quit. That guy made me watch two videos, print out a bunch of forms, medical charts, medical guidelines, made me contract almost every carrier to get appointed, and I bought almost $1,000 in leads. I called 35 leads, set up 22 appointments, and sold two. For me, that was very frustrating. I think it was my fault, too. I should have demanded more training. I still have the other leads that I've never called. They are probably almost a year and a half old. I don't know if I can still call them. So this is what I'm looking for, Steve. Someone who can train me one-on-one, -on -one, an agency that offers ride-along or field training, role-playing, mentorship, an IMO that can teach me new skills, show me to conduct my business like face-to-face, -face, over the phone, virtually, if families prefer those methods. Is this a thing? Is that possible? If a lead prefers one of those ways of communication, or are you focused in just one of these? I mean, just face-to-face -face or uh, I think that's virtual. Do you think it's possible to find what I am looking for? So let's go back to well, obviously that one real quick. So yes, obviously it is. We do virtual and we do violent. We, and we do face-to-face. -face. Uh, we have a virtual team, very successful. They work Monday through Thursdays only. They dial in the morning and book same-day appointments. I'm not giving away all of our trade secrets, but we're very good at them in the virtual. We have so you need to get that out. We got to go back over it. Um, they have several. Uh, uh, they they book Monday, work Monday through Thursday, and uh, then we've got several elite producers. That means they're making better than six figures a year, never leaving the house. So it's out. Yes. Uh, going back, I'll just answer real quick the ride along thing. Uh, I, don't, I see no value in ride along. I get this all the time. Well, I want to, you know, I want to sign with somebody local so I can go ride along. Okay. Locality it is nothing in this business. You wouldn't have large agencies like ourselves that had successful agents all across the country if they had to be in our backyard. We have very few agents in our backyard where we live. Uh, most of our agents are uh, spread all over the United States. We see them a couple times a, a year in, you know, where we can touch and feel and shake their hands. But we're, we live in the, in the, we just came out of COVID. We live in the world of Zoom. We, everything is virtual. Everything's face to face, even though you're not sitting in the same living room. So the quality of our training is uh, is the same. Ride alongs, in my opinion, don't work. Uh, first of all, the, the clients don't like it because you're ganging up on them while coming in there with two agents. It looks a little bit weird, they get weird. And good producers don't like it because they know that because the client doesn't like it, the closing ratio goes down. And so I, I there's, I mean, again, we've had, a, we've had, uh, with agents that we have in our area, Angela, I've, I've convinced you a couple times to do ride-alongs and take the agent with you. How many of those agents are still in the business? Okay. Zero. So I don't think that's a, that's a I, think, I think you might want to give that one up uh, because that's not a determining factor for your success. What is a determining factor in your success is going back to, to you booking 22 appointments, closing two, that's a failure on both parties. I, I, I appreciate that you said you used the word failed and quit separately because they are two different decisions, right? Everybody fails. That's how we learn. You decided after you failed to then quit, which is which cannot be an option. You had to be you had to be determined to fail over and over again, but never quit. That's how you learn. And I don't know what I, I dig a little deeper to find out exactly what's going on inside the the, uh, the home there. But you you should be able to call your your uh, your coach as long as he knew what he was doing. We have so many recruiters in this business right now that have never sold any insurance and don't don't have any plans to sell any insurance. They're just massive recruiters. Well, that guy is not going to help you. That's not who we are. He can't help you. Please he's reading you reading from a book because he's never done it. You need to find somebody that's leading from the front that can actually help you prepare your for, for your case, prepare your case, prepare you mentally along with your documents to go in the home and then to be able to be on standby so that when you are in the home, they can call it. Uh, you can call them or they can call you speak to you, help you out, help answer the question. Because look, when you're brand new, you're an inch thinking a mile wide of product knowledge. So it doesn't take much to derail your, 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 you inside the home. That's why you have to have that help inside the home. So if that wasn't going on, then that's a failure on his part. But maybe he doesn't know how to do it. Maybe he isn't selling the insurance. So let's go back to the, the to the, after the first question and go with it. And right with this real quick then, Angela. We'll get, you'll get your, 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 your viewpoint on them too. Um... Uh, I had a little no training, so I failed and I quit. Made me watch.
watched two videos, printed out a bunch of forms, medical charge, medical guidelines, made me contact every carrier, almost every carrier to get appointed, and I bought uh, almost $1,000 of leads. Okay. Well, the lead spend was going to man, I don't know how, how long that was. He said it for you, but I don't know if they can hear you or not. You're not talking really low. You got a lot of road, road noise. Thousand dollars in leads over over what period of time? If that's one week or two weeks, that's not a bad lead spend. I mean, I don't think you have to do that, but I don't know what kind of leads you're buying. Leads are leads. Leads are a name and a phone number and permission to call. There is a closing ratio to every lead. The older the lead, the more leads you're going to need in order to book set of a a certain amount of appointments. So I use the ratio 10, 6, 3. 10 appointments, C6, write 3. Um, if you had 22 appointments, row 2, something went wrong. Um, again, you, you didn't have help in the home, you didn't uh, uh, you didn't have to do, do a good presentation or any presentation at all. Maybe you just dropped numbers in the home and didn't didn't uh, take time to, to uh, get to know those folks. People buy from people they like, know, and trust. So there's a lot of things we can talk about there. Uh, and without drilling down the specifics, I don't really know how to help you there. But I would agree that two appointment, two sales out of 22 appointments is not a good ratio. You should be able to walk away at least 10 to 12 uh, uh, sales with 22 appointments if you were doing it correctly. Printing out all the forms and stuff, hey guys and gals, that's our business. That's just the way it is. You're gonna, be, you're gonna print out a bunch of stuff. We have bill charts too. But the carriers all have them. Uh, we have a true, our, our agents, that's why I said it indicated earlier on our training, they are really it's an orientation, it's a day in the life of. We have a you know, 15 step video process where, it, where it's, you know, you go you watch a video and you build a training and a field binder for a reason. That's what you're going to need to do uh, to work your cases uh, before you go into the home. What's the next one? You got any comments about that? Yeah. Shoot, hit it. Well, it's I think that part of what you are, and I don't want to offend all you YouTubers, but you know, this business is an interesting business, and it is there is a fine balance that I think you have to find between. Um, There's King Speech, I have an appointment there. Early. Wanting. Oh, yeah, King Speech. King Speech. Oh, yeah, you were asking me today. Yeah, sorry, I have a lead appointment for more section. Final expense, or actually life insurance. There. Okay. Um, and that is, I think you've got to be careful that you don't. I don't know that you don't want someone to that you don't want training wheels, and then expect the training wheels to be somebody kind of riding the bicycle for you. I don't know if that I don't know if that kind of makes sense or not. You know, training wheels on a bicycle are, are temporary. It's just to give you guidance. So I think that some of the points here about the ride along and you know uh, that field training it's it's not realistic in this industry I don't think you know per uh, I don't know because these are while they're relatively good size uh, you know applications or sales or ABB it's not I, I think it's just not the kind of a scenario where that works really well. Um, people do it, but I don't think it works. Well. I don't think it works. And well. top producers won't, won't do it because they don't. They, they know that they're they're, they're there to close the sale. The whole, the whole thing. And, becomes and having the risk. you there shadowing them is not going to help them close the sale. It's actually going to have an adverse effect on it. And very few people are willing to do that because they're there to support their families. Enough said. Yeah, I mean, my advice on that stuff is, you know, you've got to be willing to print all that stuff out and let somebody, let whoever your manager or your mentor or your trainer or whoever it is. Let them guide you and be willing to. What do you always say? You have to be, you know, comfortable and and you know, have a burning desire to succeed. And you've got to you've got to be willing to be bad before you're good. And some stuff's not going to make sense to you on the front end. Whether or not you, you ride it. along or not, I think, right. I think it's a great point. I mean, I don't. You you could do 50 ride alongs. What are you going to learn? You're not going to learn nothing until you're in that house by yourself. Right, until you do it. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's one thing to observe. It's quite different because I've been in that situation where, you know, I, I, I've, I've been, you know, I'll give you an example. When I was getting my pilot's license, you know, I, I, I was having that instructor sitting right there and while you're flying the airplane, boy, it feels really good. It's comforting because he can take over when you, when you, before you crash and burn. But man, life gets real when you take off. You you lift off that land, and your instructor is not in that plane. All of a sudden, things are quite different. And it's the same thing here. You, you, the way you learn this business, 
That's why you start out working BNC leads or older leads that cost less. Because you are going to go out in the field and you're going to fail. And that's how you learn. It's just the way it is. And if, as long as you have someone to call while you're in the home, we can help you start making money much faster than without any support at all. But the best way to learn this is, is to, as Angel says, jump in the water, start kicking, get in the pool. You, you know, that's, that's how you learn this business. It won't be forever. You might run eight or nine or 10 appointments without making a sale, so what? You know, as long as you're coachable, and you, one of our new reps right now, he evaluates every, every appointment he's in when he leaves to see how he could do it. We get on the phone and talk, talk it over and see how he could have improved the situation if he didn't make the sale. That's the kind of thing that's required. Next. Well, I think that's about it. An IMO that can teach me new skills and show me to conduct my business like face-to-face. -face. Uh, yeah, an IMO is not going to teach you skills. They're going to teach you, teach you generalities in, you know, in most cases. They're just not. You might pick up some, some, some skills or some techniques and tips and tricks, I guess, when you're, when you're on their calls as they're talking to, to successful agents. But IMOs are, ta are, 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 are training on generalities from 30,000 feet in the air because they have agents, thousands of agents, from all different walks of life and all different levels of experience. Right? The kind of training that you need is something you can talk to, as I said before, this video just kicked off, before, during, and after the sale. The guy that's actually in the field, right in business, right now to support his family, is the one that needs to help you learn these skills, not the IMO. And the IMO is going to be talking from a, from a very, very general uh, uh, position. Because they got a lot of agents, and you know they're, they're they're at all different levels, and you can't call them from the home and say, "Hey, I sit here with Jack and Jill," and they had a question. That that that's why it's so important that you that you get with somebody that, and that's going to be who you signed up with or or are signing up with that is leading from the front, that's doing the do. As I as I said in the last couple videos, we need less gurus and more gurus in this industry. What else? That's it. That's it. I like that. I've got. I, I, we should do this more often. I got a lot of texts. I mean, probably hundreds of texts, and I, I, I'm typing as Angel can tell you on my texts constantly, uh, responding to these kind of things. And a lot of them are very similar, but it's also some good, some great questions that maybe you guys can also learn from. So, um, hey, been great. Best time, historic time in the industry with our current write your own contract up to 140 percent plus. Uh, highest comp in the industry with uh, the best IMO. And what does the IMO provide? IMO provides products, carriers with products, insurance companies with products, should provide you technology, should provide you some training, you know, um, that you can learn from. Not the day-to-day -day stuff, but some training, annuities, IULs, you know, scripts, you know, those kind of things. Um, compensation, they're going to have uh, at least annual or biannual or semi-annual um, conferences you can go to. Basically, the tools that you need to be an agent, right? And so that that, that is to ask who the, who the best IMO is is a good question. But what you really want to find is someone that can that's leading from the front that you can sign up with that has agency level training and support. Ground level, on the ground, boots to the ground, you know, training to teach you how to do this business so you can get out of the gate and learn as fast as possible and to start making some money. And that's going to come from who you signed up with. And that person, you want to then ask them, well, what IMO are you with and what, do they, what value do they bring to me as an agent and why are you with them? It's a one-two punch. Final thoughts, Angela, you're on. Just that um, I think you have to be willing in this business to um, step, there, there are, especially when you're starting, there are a lot of steps of, on faith. And you've got to take the step on faith and be willing to go out and know that it will, you will get better. And not, you got to not fall into the pitfall of, well, I have to know these things before I go run an appointment. Or I have to see an appointment before I run an appointment. Um, you know, you can't, uh, you can't learn this stuff really. You can't, there's so much that you cannot learn 
and and absorb until you go out and start doing it. So that's always my advice to even the our, our own agents. And that is, you know, you got to get just, you got to get in the pool, and um, that's how you will that's how you will succeed. Yeah, and our program works. Yeah, you know what we teach our agents, what we put them through in the front end works. Our newest agent, three weeks in the business, he wrote almost twelve thousand dollars last week. This week he'll do fifteen to eighteen thousand. I'm guessing at least fifteen thousand this week. Not even a month into the business. So, uh, look, we're looking for agents too. Uh, this is not a recruiting channel we're here to help you all. That's why we read these texts and try to answer your questions. Uh, we're not looking for quitters. We're looking for winners. We're looking for people that really want to be successful in this business and is, are willing to be bad before you're good, willing to go out there and fail. As Angela says, we're not going to let you drown. Get in the pool, start, start kicking. That's what we're here for seven days a week. So uh, if we can help you, you can reach out to us uh, uh, via, via text. My cell phone number is in the uh, description. Uh, or you can email me. Or you can just pick up the phone and call me. And, uh, and we'll talk. My number is 530-320-8742. And like I said, it's in the description. Everybody knows. You can find me all over, all over the internet. So uh, if you fit those qualities, great. If not, I can help you figure out where you might fit in better than, than with us. Have a great day. Appreciate the questions. Just keep, keep them coming. Uh, do me a favor. Post some comments in the, in the comment section below. And we'll maybe answer yours on the next video. Bye-bye.